So today I want to talk about the term gaslighting, which is uh, an expression, a term that's used widely in popular culture. It's not a formal expression, it's more like a colloquialism. And basically what it means is to manipulate someone, mostly via psychological means, into doubting their own sanity, their own reality. So in other words, to manipulate someone in such a way that you make them doubt themselves, question themselves, including their own memories, their own perceptions, even their own truth, you know, their own story, personal story. And I think it's an important term to understand lots of relations and how they work or they fail to work today. Psychologists use gaslighting to refer to a specific type of not only manipulation, but also basically an abuse in which the abuser um, systematically chooses certain psychological methods to target um, their victim. And so it's a serious situation. It's a dangerous situation. And I think we should be aware of those moments in life when we are being gaslighted or gaslit. So let's take a closer look at the term. Interestingly, it comes to us from literature. The word itself comes from a theatre play which was staged in 1938. This is a play which was written by the English playwright and novelist Patrick Hamilton. Later on, a few years later, it was also turned into a movie. And this is a story that is set in Victorian times. It's about a couple, a dysfunctional marriage, you might say, um, in which the husband systematically, cunningly, he tries to deceive, he tries to trick his wife into thinking that she's going insane. And at some point in the, in the story, and that's where the name comes from, he is playing with the lights upstairs, you know, dimming the lights. And when she mentions this, that the, the light has changed, he says, what are you talking about? You know, there's no such thing. In a way, making her question her own perceptions, making her think that she's actually going crazy little by little. And, and in this play, the reason why the husband is doing this is because he wants to commit her into an asylum, into a mental um, institution, so that he can steal her money, so that he can steal her inheritance. So there's a very cunning, shrewd, uh, evil plan behind it. Uh, and I think gaslighting can happen in so many different ways. It doesn't have to be a romantic relationship always. Sometimes it happens in the family or in the workplace. Um, in any relationship in which there is an unequal power relationship, it can easily manifest itself. There are different types or, or methods of gaslighting. One is denial. You know, um, the other one is trivializing, like, what are you talking about? Making things look insignificant or making that person doubt their own, their own reality, their own emotions. For instance, saying to someone constantly, you are too oversensitive, you're being too emotional. Um, so little by little, if you keep saying these things again and again to someone, they are going to second guess themselves all the time. I think it's important if you find yourself always second guessing, always, you know, feeling the need to apologize to someone as if you're constantly making a mistake or you're about to make a mistake. If you feel yourself burdened with anxiety, nervousness around the same person again and again, maybe it is time to stop questioning yourself and to start questioning that person. I also want to tell you that gaslighting not only happens always between two individuals, but sometimes between an individual and a group, or a group and a group. Sometimes, for instance, populist demagogues can say to a certain group, what are you talking about? You know, what, what, why are you making a huge fuss out of your emotions? Little by little, making that group or making that minority doubt their own reality, their own stories. So it can happen, it can operate in so many different ways. But I want to make two points here. One is that we need to take good care of ourselves, of our own mental um, well-being. This is incredibly important. So if you feel like you're being gaslit by the same person again and again, or by more than one, one person, 
please don't forget to take good care of your own mental health and your own well-being. And the second thing I want to uh, mention is that we're living in an age in which almost all of us, understandably, we are struggling with anxiety, with worry, with almost like an existential angst, sometimes frustration, sometimes an emotional fatigue. You know, it is hard to be an individual, to be a human being in such a fast moving world, in such a complicated world that is full of so many challenges. And I think it's healthier, it's better when we are able to talk about our emotions without feeling guilty about our emotions, you know, without being gaslit constantly. And I think it's very important when we can listen to each other's stories, when we can hear each other's voices, because only then we realize that actually I'm not the only one, you know, I am not alone. So in a nutshell, do take gaslighting seriously. If you have friends, if you have relationships, if you have, if you know people who have a tendency to gaslight, just put a little bit of a distance or more uh, between yourself and that person. And most importantly, do not forget to take good care of yourself.